Okay, okay, yeah, here he is with his sword. Wow, wow, that's a really creepy looking, it's almost like a torch for a head. I'm not sure what we're looking at, but it's really like the graphics in this game are absolutely stunning. Grammar is a, a sword from not mythology, but from kind of related literature. It's the sword that Sigurd the Dragon Slayer uses to kill the giant Fafnir. Okay. So she's in the land of mist and fog, the place the Northmen call hell. So hell is um, a realm and hell is also a person. Hell is the realm of the dead. It's where the dead go. One of the places, according to the mythology, that the dead go. And it's ruled over by Loki's daughter, whose name is Hell. In like the Marvel sources and stuff like that, she's known as Hela. I think probably to differentiate her from the realm. But hell is both a person and a place. Yeah, it's where the dead go. And that looks like where she's off to. We have some dead bodies hanging in this river where she is arriving. It's really beautiful. It's, the visuals are really beautiful. So she's meant to be a picked warrior from Orkney. And Orkney is, there were a dynasty of Norwegian earls there um, from, they came over during the Viking age. Of course, there were people there before. There were earls and it was kind of a, um, Norway ruled it for some time. The drown, the sick, the slain. Okay, now this is typical too. I mean, like the idea that, you know, that everybody, unless you like die in battle or in something like that, or unless you're like a really bad person, you go to hell. Like not hell in the Christian sense, hell is just the realm of the dead you know, related as a word to the Christian hell, which is like the bad place. But it's simply where you go if you die and you die of sickness, old age, according to Norse mythology and the sources we have. If you die in battle, you go to Valhalla or to Freya's Hall, Folklanger. If you're really bad, you go to a different realm. And a lot of hanging, a lot of, uh, oh, no, they're not hanging. They're on, they're stuck through on some spears. So uh, what is she thinking? What is she thinking? Yeah, so it's a really creepy, creepy visuals as she is paddling her way to the realm of the dead here. It almost looks like half sunken ships of some kind with the remnants of sails, various other bodies hanging from, from this. Yeah, so it absolutely reflects what is clearly like supposed to be a miserable place according to this. I don't know who they are, that they feel you, they know you're here. Maybe these bodies, the dead who are, who are um, hanging here. She's arriving in hell, which is not a place in the world. And so, I mean, she's a picked warrior she's from Orkney, which is an actual place, whereas hell is a mythological realm. So this idea that you, know, you would travel from somewhere in the actual world to hell, with, which is a mythological realm, quite obviously not very realistic. We do have in the mythology people making the journey to hell, but that's not people, they're gods, actually. So Baldur, the good, when he is killed, he goes down to hell and there's an attempt to, to resurrect him. And one of the gods goes down to hell um, to try to get him back. That's really sort of the only kind of comparable storyline. This is meant to be face paint reflecting her her own background. And I, I, I don't know nearly as much about Celtic culture, but I know that this game does draw heavily from both Celtic culture and Norse mythology. Yeah, the graphics are really cool. This kind of land of mist, you know, I mean, it's, there's not a lot of description about what hell actually looks like, but you know, this, it has kind of a river sticks sort of feel to it in a way, kind of, you know, obviously, I mean, drawing from other, you know, other ideas of the underworld, of the realm of the dead and things like that. And it's really spooky. It's, it looks, um, it's really visually like a really stunning, yeah, stunning gameplay so far. So Hell Haim literally means the world of Hell, Hell world. Haim means world. And Hell is, again, the realm of the dead. The Sea of Knives. Okay, this is evidently Hell Haim. And Hell Haim in Norse mythology is kind of like, in the, it's in the lower part of the world tree. It's at the, the bottom. And here it's not really depicted in that way, but that's all right. And she's consulting with a head of some kind. I think that's meant to be her dead lover's head, I think. And it's kind of an interesting play on the um, the head of Mimir, who is this god, this kind of enigmatic god whose head Odin, the Allfather, the head of the Norse pantheon, carries around and consults for wisdom. So it's kind of an interesting play on that. 
Okay, the goddess Hela. The goddess Hela is referring to Hel, who is Loki's daughter, one of Loki's three monstrous children, the other two being Fenrir the wolf, and the other one, the Midgard serpent. And she's not a goddess, but she does rule over the underworld. The gods kind of dealt with all three of them in different ways, and the way that they dealt with her was relegating her to the, um, to the realm of the dead, which she's in charge of. She's on her way to uh, the bridge to Helheim. It all looks like the aftermath of like a war or a battle of some kind. It's visually a really, really beautiful game. Okay, here we have a rune stone here that um, she is. Okay, the Northmen speak of the nine worlds, the world of men they call Midgard. Yeah, so there's nine worlds or realms within the um, mythological cosmos. So that means the world according to how the mythology describes it, as opposed to like the world as it is, you know, as it contains, um, you know, the parts within the actual world of, you know, where there are countries and things like Orkney and Norway and Denmark. And so the mythological world, there are nine realms and Midgard or central enclosure is the world of humans and here she's looking at a rune stone and this is a picture stone not unlike ones that actually have been preserved um, with a runic inscription on the outside and sort of a picture stone on the inside and with using the runic alphabet uh, which was the alphabet used in Scandinavia before the Latin script was adopted. We had that there which was pretty neat. The gods are in Asgard. Okay yep so here we have a nice little account of the of the nine realms. Giant world Svartalfheim and Jotunheim. Yep, so a nice account of the of the nine realms that and then of course the, the dead in hell. And that's where she's headed. The goddess Hela lies behind the gate to Hellheim. Okay, gates to Helheim. The god of fire sort and the god of illusion, Valravn. Okay, so Sort is not a god, but sort of a fire demon of some kind. And Valravn, um, that's, Ravn means raven. And uh, Valravn isn't from mythology, but actually from like, I'm pretty sure it's like later folklore from Denmark. Muspelsheim is this hot region, and that's where Sort, the fire demon, comes from. Sorter is um, this fire demon who was at, yeah, from Muspelsheim and is going to face off against the god Frey at the end of the world. He's fire, and it's going to bring about destruction. Here we, of course, have the fire, as one would expect, with the fire demon Sort, or Sorter in Old Norse, causing all kinds of destruction. Yeah, so at the beginning of time, where there were these two, there's kind of like these two realms, this really hot realm, Muspelsheim, and Niflheim, which was this really cold realm, and Surtur is from Muspelsheim. Everything's burning up as a result of him, which he's a fire demon, so that that all makes sense. She's that's an obstacle to, I guess, get past Surt to get to Hell or Hellheim, as it's called here in this one, to rescue her, her dead lover. I don't know what this is meant to be. I don't know if that's meant to be Surt or not, but yeah, possibly. It's very creepy, very creepy monster that she's fighting here. But I'm not sure if that's meant to be Surt or not. I think it might be, which I always sort of envisioned Surt is not in form that is human, but more of like a. But that's I think just my own idea of what Surt is. Yeah. At the end of the world, the fire demon Sort is going to face off against Freyr, who is the god of fertility, but like agriculture and abundance and that type of thing, which kind of reflects, you know, how catastrophic fire is for things like um, agriculture. I'm not sure who this is. Is this Sort? Okay. This is all very surreal looking and seeming. Mm. All right. So she seems to be out of that, has passed through. Okay, no, no, here we have Sorted. I was, <laughs> none of that was Sorted. They were all people from his, uh, from his realm. Mustelsheim. Okay, okay, yeah, here he is with his sword. Wow, wow, that's a really creepy looking. Okay, it's almost like a torch for a head that he has there. I really like that. I think that's a really cool, and he absolutely is intended in the mythology as like a villain. Makes an ideal villain within a game having to do with Norse mythology. And yeah, this is really cool. So I don't really know what else to say about about Surtur, except for that he's the fire demon and he's associated with fire. And then he's going to play this role at the end of the world where he kills the god Frey and, you know, his arrival um, is one of the things that signals kind of the end of times and the god's final defeat. I don't know what those light, what the symbols are that are lighting up um, are meant to be. Well, some of them look vaguely runic. I think a lot of that's very, very meant to be more of the Celtic culture influence on this game that I'm less uh, well-versed in by far. Okay, she looks like she's getting close. 
Yeah, so how realistic it would be for Hicked Warrior to journey down to Helheim to that's to rescue the soul of her dead lover. I would say, you know, that's not a realistic scenario at all. You know, it's combining, you know, combining worlds, combining a mythological world with one that is, you know, more historical. So situating historical cultures into something that's otherwise obviously not um, not historical. Okay, so here we have symbols on the ground. It's hard to see what they are. Um, and we are, have we defeated Sort? Okay, and there's runes that are um, going around that, um, that portal. Valorab and the God of Illusions. The supernatural raven from folklore, I think, as opposed to from mythology. But ravens play a big role in Norse mythology. I mean, you have Odin's ravens that go out and bring him the news of all the realms. A lot of talking birds play a role throughout the mythology. They often kind of give people heroes and gods um, information, useful information, wisdom of some kind hard to see what's meant. I think that's intentional. I think it's hard to see what's going on here. Or is this the Valravan, the god of illusions? Yeah, that would make sense. It's kind of a the bird skull type of thing going on. Again, this is not something from mythology. This is like a more of a folkloric being from later folklore. But the ravens and birds and the role that birds play in mythology is pretty well established. But it's a very, yeah, it's, this one doesn't look like a very good, like it's very creepy. Not a helpful bird. And again, I don't know what these symbols are here. Some of them look vaguely Celtic. She's fighting the raven. All right, so she's defeating, defeating Valravn at last, it looks like. So she's defeated Surt, the fire demon, and she's defeated this god of illusions, Valravn. And that's going to help her get into Helheim. All right, and I wonder, there's a tree imagery. And I mean, the tree holds significance absolutely in Norse mythology and in Celtic culture as well. All right, she's fighting against a Viking warrior. Let's see, because some antlers um, that are adorning various parts of his his armor, um, his shield, which as far as I know, that's not a typical part of shields from the Viking age, nor are antlers generally something that you find on things like helmets and the like. Um, it's a little hard to see with the graphics. It's very dark as we are in on our way to, to Helheim, so it's a little bit difficult to see. She's gotten rid of him pretty quickly. And she's about to meet Hela for the first time. So again, it's Hel in the mythology. Doesn't really matter. Again, this is sort of the, she rules the underworld. And you know, she's also called Hela in the Marvel interpretation where she is related to Thor. Oh, wow. That's a really, really, I mean, I didn't know what I was expecting Hela to look like, but that's, it's extremely creepy. Certainly didn't expect the proportions and absolutely not for her to look like she does. In the mythology, like she can be, you don't fight, whoa, you don't fight her. Like she's something, someone who can be reasoned with. Like for example, she says that she'll let Balder come back to life if all living things will, um, will cry for him. They don't because Loki refuses to. Grammar. Grammar is a, a sword from not mythology, but from kind of related literature called legendary literature. It's the sword that Sigurd the Dragon Slayer uses to kill the giant Fafnir. And it's the sword that his father had pulled out of this tree oh, that Odin had stuck it there. And it was only meant kind of a sword in the stone type of a situation where only the most um, noble warrior can, can pull it out. And that's Sigurd's father. He does. Um, eventually it gets shattered in battle and it's reforged for him and you can see that this is obviously a legend that inspired Tolkien with Lord of the Rings but that's what the um, sword named Grammar is based on that particular legend and she's obviously much like Sigmund who took it out of this tree barnstock in the saga of the Volsungs I think it's if she's able to get it out kind of a sign that she's worthy or something like that but I'm not entirely sure something else is happening so she seems to be in in hell um, the realm Helheim as they're calling it here yep so we have yeah forged by so it was yeah, gifted to Sigmund, who's the, um, the the father of Sigurd the Dragon Slayer. What happens in the text is that Odin like comes like disguised. He walks into this hall, doesn't say a word, and he just stabs the sword into this tree barnstock and he leaves. And then Sigmund's the only one who is able to pull it out. It shatters in battle and can only be reforged by this one smith for his son. 
sacred. So it's interesting to seeing to see it being used here. Um, they're drawing from kind of a different corpus, um, but also related to the mythology. So pulling grammar out of the tree. Yeah, I mean, that fact that she's able to do that is like, it's in reference to this kind of worthiness of the warrior and also that the warriors, it's only the one that kind of Odin chooses as well, who is able to take it out of the tree. But here it's, I guess, her, just her dead lover and she's not supposed to do that, I guess. So something's closing off. Okay, we must refer further into Helheim here. It's looking, I'm not sure what we're looking at, but it's really like the graphics in this game are absolutely stunning. I don't know what happened to Gnama or if, why, if whether she still has the sword. It looks like she's, yeah, within a tree of some kind and that Hell is sort of, you know, at the base of um, Yggdrasil, the world tree, but the, it's also, it's a tree, it looks like, and roots of a tree, but it's also, it looks like tortured, tortured people as well. Okay, and I'm not sure who this is meant to be. Still carrying her lover's head. Yeah, I don't know who this is that she's battling with here. Okay, she's got Gram there. Gram, the sword that it can only be taken out of the tree by the person worthy enough to wield it, which is ev evidently her. They don't know who this is supposed to be. Yeah, but it's, the visuals are really, really beautiful here. Yeah, I'd be interested in knowing more about these symbols that keep appearing um, and what they're based on. I don't know what else to say about this fighting of this unknown monster. Tame the beast. The beast. Oh, it's Fenrir. Okay, so it's Fenrir. So this is Hel's brother. Hela's brother, Fenrir, is, I guess, in Helheim as well. And um, it's Fenrir the wolf, the brother of Hela, who is, I guess, down in Helheim as well. And again, the Futhark, the runic alphabet encircling this portal. So again, these were letters that formed the, the runic alphabet, which was used in Scandinavia prior to Christianity coming, which brought with it the Latin alphabet. And there's Hela again, and she's absolutely terrifying in her final confrontation here. Yeah, it is absolutely her mother. This is absolutely like it seems like a just an extremely like a haunting type of game or whatever this character is going through here. And is this meant to be Hella? I'm not sure what this is meant to be. Looks different from the creature who was Hella. She has the head of her dead lover. Yeah, I mean it's clear like the anguish that she's feeling. Okay. Yeah, I've read some things about how this is supposed to be some met metaphor. The narrative is a metaphor for I think psychosis or something like that. And um, as far as I can tell, or as far as I know, and there was some consult consultation with mental health professionals. But if that's the case, it's really beautifully done. I'll fight with you at Ragnarok. Yeah, I'll fight with you at Ragnarok. Okay. So she's vowing to decide against evidently the gods at Ragnarok at the end of the world, Norse apocalypse, if she can have her dead lover back. And it's like, yeah, like I said, like the the story that does revolve around trying to get someone back from the god, from the underworld, from hell, is of Baldur, the god whose death called, or kind of set up, set into motion the events that led to the end of the world. They're trying to get him back to prevent the end of the world happening and also to get Baldur back because he's the most beloved of all the gods. But here we have something, some, a different take on the, the events and are saying that she'll fight with her at Ragnarok or the end of the world to have her lover back. Yeah, it's kind of a lot of, oops. Okay, she stabs her. And we have the head here after she's been, I think that's meant to be a smaller version of Hela, covered in runes. She's a very creepy looking figure, like suitably, I think, creepy for the person or the, the figure that rules the underworld. She's got runic letters all over her. Yeah, this is a really like haunting gameplay. Yeah, so she's covered in runic um, letters of, of various kinds. Okay, emerge from magic only to return to the sea. All right, and it's Senua again. Okay. So she is Hella. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. All right, thanks, Gameology. That was Hellblade. I'm Dr. Natalie Van Dusen. You can find me on TikTok, The Low Key Professor, and you can also look me up on Google to find my university page. If you want more Gameology, go to Facebook or YouTube, and we'll see you next time.